Lionel Messi is considered the greatest football player of all time by many people, so it's no wonder many scouts search deeply to find the next Messi. As a result, many different young players with talent get labeled as the next Messi, but only a few of them actually manage to break records held by Messi himself. And today we'll be talking about a player who did just that, Lee Song Woo, aka the Korean Messi. Since a young age, he was considered a special talent back in South Korea. His youth coach in Korea described him as he had good sense, so even if I taught him one or two things, he absorbed it on his own. His coach pointed out that his weakness was that he was too one-footed and that he could only use his right foot. So Lee Sung Woo trained very hard. He trained until he became proficient at both foot and eliminated his weakness. This tenacity and determination made him a step above all the other kids at his young age. His big breakthrough came in 2010 when he was 12 years old participating in the Danone Nationals Cup in South Africa. The Danone Cup was a competition attended by all the best prospects worldwide ages from 10 to 12. All the top scouts in the world attend this event in hopes to find the next great player. Luckily for Lee, he impressed at this tournament, which drew the attention of Barcelona, who contacted the Korean FA to sign him into their youth academy. Now this was a big deal back in Korea because it was very rare for a Korean player to join a top team, especially a team like Barcelona at such a young age. With Song Woo making a move at a such a young age, he was now hailed the future of the South Korean national team. Some might think this is too much pressure for just a 12 year old, but he thrived on it. Just in his first year playing for the Barcelona under-13 team, he already broke Lionel Messi's scoring record, scoring 39 goals in just 29 games. And he was also named the best player in four different youth competitions. The Torneo Canilas, Memorial Gateno Cicera, Trofeo San Bonifacio, and the Gabella Cup. That combined with his low center of gravity with his quickness and technical ability, he quickly drew comparisons as the Korean Messi. Heading into the under-16 Asian Championship in Thailand, he was already considered the greatest prospect in the whole continent of Asia. All the eyes in the tournament were on him to see if he could actually deliver what he shown at He would only double down on the pressure as in the quarterfinals, he would say, beating a team at the level of Japan will be easy. Now just from looking at the surface level, this seems like a pretty confident statement by a young prospect. But looking at the context, it was much more than that. If you don't know, there is great animosity between Japan and South Korea that is deeply rooted in history. The rivalry goes beyond sports and it's just deeply rooted in everybody's lives in those both countries. So if he failed to deliver with all the hype around him and this comment, then he would be crucified by the Korean media and fans. But Lee Song Woo, doing what he does best, delivered. Styling through the Japan's defense, scoring twice in the route to victory. With his second goal especially being special, picking up the ball from the halfway line and going all the way to score. After the game, Japan's defender Tomiyasu was quoted as saying, if you don't follow him, then you can't stop him. His reign of terror continued against Syria in the semi-finals where he scored one goal and four assists in a 7-1 demolish of the country. His run would unfortunately come to an end in the finals where he lost 2-1 against North Korea. What? Yes, North Korea. Apparently they had a good youth team back in the day, I guess. But it didn't matter too much for him as he still finished at the top scorer and the MVP of the whole tournament. His stock was now at an all-time high and his comparisons to Korean Messi only grew and grew more. But something tragic would happen shortly after this tournament. Barcelona received a transfer ban after signing too much international under 18 players. They were fined 305,000 euros and also banned from signing any players for one year long. But this ban, which was designed to punish Barcelona, punished Lee Sung Woo even more because he was now banned from playing any competitive games for Barcelona until the age of 18. Now there was one hope, if his parents moved to Barcelona with him, he would be able to play and they were planning on just doing that. But it was too little too late because the decision had already been made by the FA at that point. As a result of the ban, the only competitive action he would get was international tournaments with the South Korean national team. This was a huge blow to his development because he would be stuck behind only playing the rare tournaments. With this transfer ban announced, other teams were ready to take advantage of the situation. Teams like Chelsea, Arsenal, Real Madrid all tried to lure him with the promise of playing time and more money. With Chelsea in particular offering him to make the highest paid player at his age in the UK. But he decided to stay at Barcelona because he believed staying loyal to Barcelona would pay off in the end with him getting a spot on the team after turning 18. In 2015, his hype continued to grow, but he started to let the hype get to his head and he started acting out. His behavior would especially deteriorate in the Under-17 World Cup, where he was seen kicking a billboard after missing a chance in a pre-tournament friendly. And he was seen being very upset after being subbed off of the game. Things got worse after the game, as he didn't follow the Korean tradition of bowing as leaving the pitch, which is supposed to be showing a sign of respect towards the fans and appreciation for their own country. But instead of doing that, he stormed off the pitch and went back into the locker room. 
This really upset the Korean fans, and some of them even as far as to tell him to become a naturalized citizen in Spain so he doesn't have to represent in South Korea anymore. Now that was probably too harsh for a 17 year old, but it was clear to see that his performance and behavior was deteriorating pretty fast. In the press conference after the game, he was quoted saying, I had problems with my touch, and there were many things that I personally regret. This sounds pretty good, right? He showed humbleness and humility, but... It got it only got worse as he started speaking more. He followed up saying, In Korea, I've been told I lack maturity and physicality, but Barcelona just promoted me to their professional team. Over there, they see me differently, so I thank them. With this quote, it showed that he wasn't really taking the criticism to heart and he was instead brushing them off as haters. This prompted Korean legend Lee Young Pyo to say on social media, Attitude is as important as ability. But yet again, Lee Young Pyo brushed off the comment, this time a little more passive aggressive, saying it would have been better if he said that to my face. His disastrous cup run would come to an end against Belgium, where he missed a crucial penalty to lose the game. After this tournament, many people started to doubt his ability and physicality to be able to handle tough competition, with people believing he didn't develop much after the transfer ban with him getting no playing time. After turning 18, he would eventually get called up to the Barcelona B team, but there he didn't get much playing time, only playing in one game in total before being sold. He was sold to Hellas Verona for 1.5 million euros with a buyback clause and this would be a good opportunity for him because he here he could actually get playing time and get crucial development in the top flight league and it would start off wonderful for him coming in as a substitute against AC Milan and scoring a volley outside the box but that would be as good as he gets the first season because he rarely got playing time and only played in 14 games total with Hellas Verona also getting relegated in process with Hellas Verona getting relegated to Serie B he would get more playing time this time he would play in 27 games, but unfortunately for him, he failed to impress because he only scored one goal throughout the whole season. With Hellas Verona getting promoted back to Serie A, they believed they didn't need Isong Wu anymore because he failed to impress up Serie B, so it would be even worse for him in the Serie A. He would instead become a free agent and he would end up signing with St. Troiden, a Belgian team playing in the top flight. Unfortunately for him, he didn't get playing time for the first four months of the season and he would only get a sniff of playing time once their current manager Mark Brees got fired. But even then, he only got a of 222 minutes that season which is less than three full games of game time in the next season he would finally get a run of games to start but after not scoring in six straight games he would be put back into the bench after being put back into the bench duties he would be loaned out in january to portimonense a team in portugal and they had an option to buy with the general feeling that if he showed any sort of potential he would be signed this was seen as sort of a last chance for Lee Sung Woo to prove himself to be capable of playing in the European leagues. But having said all that, he still struggled to pr prove his worth in his new team and he barely got any playing time with him only playing 4 games. They would elect to not activate the buy option and he would return after the loan. But back in Sint Traden, he was still not wanted as the whole point of the loan was to hopefully get rid of him and send him to a new team but it didn't work out. So now that he was back on the team, his contract would be terminated and he would be left without a team. For the first time in his career, he was teamless and nobody in Europe wanted him. His only option was to go back to Korea and prove his worth yet again. This required a lot of self-humility and admitting defeat. Back in South Korea, he has looked pretty solid so far, playing in 47 games and scoring 15 goals. With him looking solid yet again, teams in Europe are interested, with the Scottish team Hearts in particular wanting to sign him past summer. But he has decided to stay put and the plan is for him to join the European team the next summer. And that takes us to the day where Lee Sung Woo is 25 years old and he's back in Korea with the chance to go back to Europe in the future. He's still pretty young to turn it around and have a solid career but he won't reach the potential he displayed early in his career. His window to become a superstar that everyone believed he could be early in his career has closed. And I think what we can take away from this story is that mismanagement of careers could jeopardize anybody with any sort of potential. Him not being able to play in any competitive games before he was 18 really screwed his development up. It's really unfortunate a band that was supposed to punish Barcelona punished the players even more. I think that really turned him frustrated from his situation which caused his performance levels to drop and in turn even more pressure from scrutiny from the media and fans. And I just think this whole cycle with him believing in his own hype and acting cocky and also not showing up, I think that really ruined his career. With no competitive game time, he wasn't able to develop as much as his hype warranted and and I think that caused a disconnect between his self-perceived notion of how good he was and how good he actually was on the pitch. With him falling more and more behind, by the time he reached 18 and actually reached the professional team, 
he was as good as the other young prospects who actually got playing time throughout the whole academy years. And even when he did get sold to other teams, his playing time was spotty at best and when he came on, he just wasn't that player anymore. He was pretty weak with his small size and easily bullied off the ball and didn't really offer not that much end product. I think the first step he needed to take was accepting that he wasn't going to become the superstar that everybody thought he was going to be. And I think he just did that with um, going back to Korea. So. I think he could really have a bright future in terms of being a, just a role player in like a, maybe like the Belgian league, maybe even like the Eredivisie. But hopefully things work out and he regains some of the things that made him the Korean Messi.